one of the main pillars of purification of the heart, perhaps even the backbone, is the pillar of sincerity, ikhlas. Ikhlas is the very reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated the entire religion. Worship Allah with ikhlas, making the religion sincere to Him. The only commandment that I have given them, the only commandment is that they worship Allah mukhlisina lahuddin. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us of the importance of ikhlas in many dozens of a hadith. Of them, the first hadith in the most authentic book, Sahih al-Bukhari, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى Actions will be judged by what is inside, not what is outside. And Allah will reward you based upon what is here, not what is there. In the other hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ Allah does not look at your outer bodies. He does not look at your forms. He does not look at your shapes. Rather, He looks at your hearts and what the deeds produce from those hearts. The concept of ikhlas, brothers and sisters, we can go on and on. One of the famous tabi'een, he remarked, ikhlas changes everything. If you have the right ikhlas, the smallest deed will be magnified to the biggest. And if you don't have ikhlas, the largest deed will be destroyed and become annulled. What is important is what is inside. What is important, everything is based upon the sincerity. What is ikhlas linguistically? And when we use it in the sharia, what does it mean? The word ikhlas comes from the three letter khalasa. And khalasa means actually to get rid of, to finish. So that's why the Arabs say khalas, you done? Right? So khalas means like finish off. Akhlasa means you have gotten rid of everything except for one goal. Akhlasa, everything else is eliminated except for one thing, sincerity. That's why khalasa, to eliminate, to get rid of, and khalas, to be sincere to Allah alone, because there's no one else that is in your niyyah other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of ikhlas are too many. Of them, number one, the deed shall not be accepted without ikhlas. If you don't have sincerity, it doesn't matter what the people think, your deed shall not be accepted. Number two, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us, in fact in the Quran itself, that shaitan has no access to the one that has ikhlas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when shaitan threatened to misguide mankind, shaitan himself had to make one exception. Except for your servants who have ikhlas, I shall not be able to touch them. Even shaitan knew ikhlas means you are off limits. I can't get to you. Number three, in the hadith we learn that whoever has ikhlas, his dua is answered, especially when he needs it. In that famous hadith of the three people trapped in the cave, and they are about to die, they don't have anything to save them. Each one says, let us make dua to Allah about something we did. Perhaps Allah will show a miracle to us. And so everyone mentions one deed they did with ikhlas. Nobody knew about it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They bring that one deed. Oh Allah, I was honest in my dealings and I gave back the entire money even though I could have cheated him, but I didn't. Oh Allah, my parents, I did this and that. Oh Allah, you know, the lady invited me for evil. I could have, but for your sake. Ikhlas, ikhlas, ikhlas. And what happened? A miracle took place and the rock was lifted up. When you most need a dua, your deeds of ikhlas come in handy. And of them, of the benefits of ikhlas, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about his shafa'ah on the day of judgment. Abu Huraira said, Ya Rasulullah, who's going to get your intercession? I want to get that intercession. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever says la ilaha illallah with ikhlas, shall get that intercession. To have ikhlas and the kalima will bring about that entire intercession. And of the benefits of ikhlas, brothers and sisters, and perhaps one of the greatest benefits, when you do something for the right reason, Allah blesses your deed and action. And Allah gives you strength and courage. And Allah allows you to stand up against every single challenge, every single naysayer, every single impediment. When what is inside is right, 
What is on the outside with other people becomes irrelevant. You're doing it for the right reason. Allah will bless you and Allah will help you and you shall be victorious. Look at the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is as if he is standing against the entire mankind. Mecca has rejected him. Ta'if wants to kill him. Badr takes place. Uhud takes place. He has no army. He has no large group. And yet he has ikhlas. And with that ikhlas, he literally comes and changes the entire world. And if you look at our history of ulama. There were so many ulama. They didn't have the mechanisms and means, but inshallah they had ikhlas. And because of that ikhlas, their legacy, their works, their writings live on. You want to be successful? You want to really achieve an impactful legacy? Begin with inside the heart. Turn your gaze inside and make sure you are doing it for the right reason. Because brothers and sisters, when you do it for the wrong reason, not only will there be no barakah and blessing, but when the going gets tough, what are you going to find comfort in? You didn't have the right reasons. When people start criticizing, when your own friends and family, they become naysayers, how will you get comfort? How will you get courage? How will you stand up and continue with your resolve? Your niyyah was wrong. But if your niyyah is right, if you did it for the right reasons, if Allah knows you're doing it for the right reason, I'm doing this for the betterment, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well then, if all of mankind is against you, you know that Allah is on your side. What more do you need? So subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, have ikhlas. Now question, how do we have ikhlas? This is another topic. I'll just begin today with one point. We'll continue inshallah after two days. There's going to be one break today. After two days, we'll continue. One point of ikhlas that we should remember. Our scholars say, to bring about ikhlas, imagine yourself standing on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make this a regular routine in your mind. All too often, we neglect the akhirah. We neglect death. We neglect qabr. We are told in the sharia to think about death, to think about our qabr, to think about qiyamah. Why do you think every page of the Quran mentions the day of judgment, describes the day of judgment in vivid detail? Why? Because Allah wants you to know. Because when you know, it impacts your life. It impacts your intention. So one of the ways of increasing ikhlas to think of the afterlife, to think of the inevitable journey, the angel of death coming to you, being put in the qabr, munkar and nakir, the darkness of the grave, the tightness of the grave, the aloneness in the grave. Think about the resurrection, think about the hisab, think about judgment. The more you think about all of these things, the more you shall realize what is important is not what the people say, it's not what the people think. What is important is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believes about me. And the only way to change this is to look inside and to do it for the sake of Allah. And inshallah we'll continue with ikhlas uh, and the concept of ikhlas in two days. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما